Hi, this is Anrio here. I'm going to show you in the next three episodes how to put together a really nice desktop based on the standard desktop metaphor. I decided to put this together when GNOME 3 came out, which I really dislike. If you want to skip ahead, you can go to about three and a half minutes. As you see, I got Compass. I got my different desktops up, my browser. Um, I'm doing some programming over here on the other side. What I'm basically going to do is show you in three episodes, the first one being a demonstration of what it's going to look like or what your desktop will look like. The second is the actual installation. And the third is going to be how to pimp it up, how to put Compass, Emerald, um, uh, LightDM, or Slim. Here you can see one of my programs that I use a lot. I've done a little programming on it. I'll show you an example. A friend of mine said that Linux is no good at making animations. Well, this is what 3D uh, animators have done who are open source users. I think it's pretty nice. I'm just going to show it for about a minute here. I didn't do these, by the way. Friends of mine and people I know and people I don't know have done them. And of course, all these programs are free, and quality-wise, they're just as good, if not better, than a lot of programs that cost a lot of money. Now, this is going to be an installation for the home desktop. I've decided to go with testing. You'll have programs that are newer than Ubuntu, or generally newer than Ubuntu. Um, of course, the sign, everything is signed, which unlike uh, Arch, they're not. Arch doesn't sign their packets. One of the things I like the most about Debian is that they have finally got a 100% blob-free kernel. That means there's no binaries that you can't read. And I'm showing some more stuff on Compass, just pulling things along the desktops. I recorded this with FFmpeg. Now, why Debian? Well, here are some reasons. This is explaining the Debian cycle. Stable is great for servers, it really is, but your programs are going to get old. I mean, they don't generally release a new release more than every 18 months or so. Testing also known at the present time as Wheezy, is probably the best way to go. Here's some more reasons in detail and explaining what testing really is. Ice Weasel is Firefox, if you're wondering. The reason they don't call it Firefox is the name Firefox itself actually has a patent on it, I guess you could say, and Debian's philosophy is they just do not like anything that's got any kind of a patent thing. All right, go into this URL, the one that I just showed up here, and we're going to get the business card. It's only 20 to 50 megabytes big in size. We're going to build this thing from scratch. Now, if you've got a 64-bit computer, Intel, AMD, it doesn't matter. You take the AMD 64. If you've got a 32-bit computer, go and get the uh, i386 there. This is really important. We need to see if this image is authentic. We're going to check the uh, MD5 hash sum. I'm also going to show you, if you're using Windows, how to do this, to at least give you a URL where there's a Firefox plugin. Okay, watch carefully what I just did there, how I pasted in the URL. I used the name. That's the image that we downloaded. And you see the number in front there? It's a 32, 
it's a 32 uh, character number. We're going to compare our image. We go into the directory where our image is, which is under downloads in my case. Oh, and if you're using Windows, get this add on, and you can do this in Windows. You don't need it if you're using any kind of a Linux thing, and I prefer to do it this way. We give the command md5sum, the name of the image we downloaded. And that's it, md5sum. It's going to do a calculation on the image and generate a number. Now that number has to be the same as the one we see on the page from this URL. And in my case, they are. So we know that this is a real image and we don't have to be worried about uh, some kind of a phishing scheme or something. Now burn this onto a CD.